Hi, welcome back to our returning attendees and welcome to our new participants for the closing session of the Water and Energy for Food Introductory Week. Uh, my name is Cassie Rodriguez, the Donor Relations Manager for We for Food, and I will be facilitating today's closing session. Uh, thank you again to all who have attended this week and today it's really been thrilling to engage with you all through insightful questions, informative presentations from our speakers, and lively discussions. Just a few reminders that perhaps you are already aware um, before we get started. Uh, this session is being recorded and will be uploaded to the We for Food website and YouTube channel. A reminder that there is a Q&A box on the right hand side and you can submit your questions and comments in this box throughout the session and we will answer them in the Q&A portion. You have the option of submitting your questions anonymously. Uh, please do note that we may not get to all of your questions, uh, but we will be uploading detailed responses to the unanswered questions on our website. A reminder again that this session will be in English. There is the transcription available in French and Arabic. Uh, you can also turn on live captions and subtitles. To do so, you can select caption slash subtitles on using the closed caption icon in your video controls. To change the caption language, please select the settings icon and then caption slash subtitles to choose your preferred language. Again, written transcriptions will also be available after the event. Great, with that, um, we have reached our last session of the week, new program, new solutions, We for Foods path forward. In our closing, we will cover a quick background of We for Food, the program's views on the importance of partnerships and how different organizations can join our efforts to transform the water energy food nexus. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our closing session speakers and We for Food Steering Committee partner representatives, Carmen Lopez Clavero. Carmen is the Senior Program Manager Specialist for the Sustainable Economic Development Unit at the Swedish International Development Corporation Agency, or CETA. Also, I'd like to introduce you to Ku McMahon, who is the team lead for We for Food at the USAID Global Development Lab. I'd also like to introduce you to Omer van Rotterdam. Omer is the Senior Policy Advisor for Water and Environment at the Inclusive Green Growth Department at the, the Netherlands Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And last but not least, Thomas Brouwer. Thomas is the Head of Project for the Rural Development and Agricultural Dep Department at GIZ. Great, with those introductions, I turn the floor over to our speakers. First is Carmen. Carmen, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you, Cassie. But what is Water Energy for Food? Just to give you a quick background on the program, for those of you who have or may not have been able to attend any of the earlier sessions, Water Energy for Food is a second generation grand challenge for development that continues the partnerships of its predecessors, securing water for food and powering agriculture. Together with BMZ, uh, the German Federal Ministry for Economic uh, Cooperation and Development through GIZ, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands, Sweden through the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency and the US Agency for International Development. And we all are returning together in partnership for Water Energy for Food. So Water Energy for Food builds on the lessons learned from securing water for food and powering agriculture to accelerate innovations operating at the water energy food nexus. We call it a second generation program just because not only is uh, joining forces of the new programs or the old programs combining into a new one, but it's an own co-creation focus on taking sustainability, scale and impact to a higher level. Water Energy for Food aims to promote poverty reduction, gender equality and have a positive impact on the environment, the climate, human rights, conflict and context sensitivity for the integration of environmental, social and government 
governance principles, the ESG principles. We strongly believe that we need to integrate holistic whole of system approaches to sustainably scaling solutions that can impact these problems. Our program ESG principles are a key part of our contributions to sustainable development goals are based on the UN principles for responsible investment, also called UNPRI, and customized to align with the water energy for food visions and goals. Water Energy for Food believes that integrating guiding principles into our daily work will allow us to set out strategies, processes and precautionary measures that will have a net positive impact on poverty reduction, environment, water and climate, human rights, conflict and context sensitivity, and also an adding impact to gender equality. Importantly, incorporating ESGs encourages entrepreneurial creativity to help farmers grow more food with less water and energy to face this goal and global challenges and meeting growing demand for food. Lastly, securing biodiversity and ecosystem services while developing sustainable water use habits in crucial, it is crucial for adapting to and mitigating the effects of climate change. Next slide, please. So through water energy for food activities, the program aims to increase food production along the value chain through a more sustainable and efficient usage of water and or energy. Increase income for the base of the pyramid, both women and men in both rural and urban areas, sustainably scale innovators solutions to meet the challenges in the water energy for food nexus, while also promoting climate and environmental resilience and biodiversity through the sustainable holistic management of water, natural resources and ecosystems. The goal of the Grand Challenges is to uh, bring through partnership governments, companies, foundations together around important issues that one or one of those uh, groups could not solve alone. And so to achieve that motivation when these different actors are brought together and then go out into the world to look for new actors who are not engaged in the space. And if you heard the last session, you know, it's bringing also uh, scientists and researchers, but with a focus around how do we bring in these new voices to solve these problems and get uh, new actors involved to impact those on the ground who are most focused on. And so thanks to our partnerships and their commitment to the grand challenges, that hard work has been put into this program and we look forward to continued and new relationships and successes while also dealing with some challenges uh, in the new water and energy for food grand challenge. Food is seeking partnerships. Partnerships that are catalytic and bring significant value to the program at the global, regional and or national level of the regional innovations hub, hubs. It operates in the four regions to work with partners and implement activities that leverage experience, expertise and advance core interests to achieve the program's development objectives, leading to transformational impact and systemic change. And partnerships with organizations who also adhere to ESG principles, environment, social, government principles to promote poverty reduction, gender equality, and have a positive impact on the environment, climate, human rights, conflict, and context and, and context sensitivity. Within the program structure, there are many areas where partnerships would be effective. The opportunities are not just limited to certain levels, but can encompass different types of work, from engaging the regional innovation hubs, brokering units in the regional innovation hubs, to researching technologies, to advocating for improved enabling environments.
Uh, the regional hubs that you can see here, the four regional hubs, are working closely together with local, national and regional institutions and networks on the ground. So as NGOs, research institutes or donors, uh, who in, in general wants to share the common goal and the common interest of producing more food with sustainable use of water and energy. Uh, we are always looking forward for new partnerships in every region and every country. And uh, we see it as very crucial to have localized relationships on the ground, so uh, local networks. Um, making sure to join us for our kickoff uh, a week starting September 28, where you can learn more about the details of the hubs and where do we work and how do we work and how do we how we are organized. Uh, the four uh, local, the four regional hubs are based in uh, West Africa, uh, Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire. East Africa, Kenya, Middle East and uh, North uh, Middle East and North Africa in uh, Lebanon and South and Southeast Asia in Bangkok in Thailand. Um, organization that joined the uh, of Food as a steering committee partners have the opportunity uh, to uh, establish new regional hubs in an area uh, currently not covered by the project or fund already existing hubs um, as they yeah as they, yeah. Um, next slide, please. Um, for four major categories of partnerships in the We for Food are foreseen donor partners, investment partners, ecosystem and value chain partners, and policy level partners. And uh, if you're interested uh, to work with us, uh, but you don't see how your organization can fit into those or other categories, please don't hesitate to contact us and, uh, and then we can explore how we, how we can find a common ground and, uh, and a way forward to work together in partnership. So when referring to donor partners, uh, the fund is seeking to onboard more steering committee partners from developing countries and emerging economies. We see this as very important for developing more tailored and viable innovations, improving self-reliance and fostering sustainable development impact and systemic change. To participate in the steering committee as a full member, a partner must commit at least 2 million US dollars per year or 10 million US dollars over a five year period or the equivalent if it's the case in, in euros. The requirement for participation of strategic developing emerging economy partners from the regions the program operates in will be handled flexibly and decisions for the participation in the steering committee will be made on a case by case basis. So it is possible for other actors to participate in the steering committee as strategic partners. So this is something that we're, we're also looking forward to. But what does the steering committee do? The steering committee oversees the overall direction and strategy of the program, representing the highest decision making level of the program. This, the tasks uh, could include, but are not uh, sort of limited to, follow the progress in terms of achieving the objectives of the water energy for food. The overall strategy includes its cross cutting issues based on learnings from the regions and on policy developments on the global or respective national level of the donors. The regional selection of new innovators is also foreseen by approving selection criteria and proposed candidates. This could be also roles and our roles for the steering committee, but any other further points deemed necessary by its members can be brought up to the agenda of the steering committee. Next slide, please. When we refer to the investment partners, what we're looking for is investment partners that are interested in the long term success of the enterprise and would like to provide general support with the company of operations. Examples of investment partners could include but are not limited to, for example, impact investors, venture capital funds, banks, foundations, fund managers, etc. with funding strategies that align to the focus areas geographic regions and organizational maturity of the water energy for food innovators. What are we hoping that they do and that they're doing this investment partners? They facilitate investment and unlock the power of private capital to drive inclusive growth for water energy for food innovators at the national, regional and or global level. 
they can provide water energy for food innovators with investment opportunities with the intention to generate a measurable beneficial social or environmental impact alongside a financial return. Investment partners could also provide mentoring and networking opportunities to those innovators. Investment partnerships also include regional or global partnerships for financial guarantee instruments that transfer investment risks in order to enable the scaling of water energy for food innovators. will depend on the length and nature of the engagement. Types of organizations we for food uh, would like to engage or partners can be from the private sector or NGOs or think tanks or universities or science and research organizations. What would they do then? Accelerate business to business linkages, catalyze investment, improve distribution and stimulate adoption of innovations. Or they could conduct research, perform far farmer outreach, provide technical assistance or support with the, produce, the distribution or procurement of uh, different activities and direct as a knowledge provider. Next slide, please. Looking for thought leaders and promote the need for policy interventions in the We for Food Nexus or the Water Energy Food Nexus help Nexus innovators to scale their business and impact, especially on cross-cutting issues, like, as we said before, the environmental, social and governance issues. Types of organization in this space can be specialized thematic departments or agencies of international bodies, regional groups or national governments, as well as donor policy support programs. But also think of the NGO sector, think tanks, universities or science research organization in this field. And what would they then do? Well, support the enabling environment goals of the program through national, regional or global policy outreach. And depending on their mandates, the policy level partners could promote the incorporation of successful innovations, lessons learned from the We for Food program and the Nexus approach into national and regional regulations or policies or strategies and programs. They could generate knowledge, facilitate advocacy work by highlighting important issues that hinder the innovations or the scaling of innovations of the supported innovators and end users uptake of innovations. And they could engage in advocacy activities related to the enabling environment with the hope of contributing to systemic change in the regions on behalf of the V for Food program. And so uh, SWIFT and Powering Ag successfully engaged the private sector to the benefit of farmers around the world. Uh, SWIFT innovators raised about 25 million in external funds from over 300 additional partnerships. And Powering Ag's investment alliance with Alpha, Mundi, and Factor E uh, will catalyze a minimum of $25 uh, million in private sector finance. Uh, and their partners uh, who they worked with contributed significantly more. The Power and Ag founding partner GIZ, in partnership with the United Nations uh, Food and Agriculture Organization, produced foundational studies that uh, presented approaches to integrating clean energy technologies in agricultural value chains. And We for Food aims to build on these successes and bring in more partners and do more advocacy work. Next slide, please. Another uh, lesson learned from SWIFT and Power and Ag is that we needed to develop further localized program support and greater engagement with embassies, other donors, NGOs, and other programs. Uh, innovator success requires that multi-stakeholder collaboration, as well as the flexibility to pivot and recalibrate based on lessons learned from measurement and monitoring data. And those key challenges to reach in sustainable scale and ensuring long-term systemic change and sustainable impact. To do that, we're going to have to connect innovators to private sector and other capital and promote an enabling environment, enabling environment for private sector entrepreneurship and innovation in the countries and regions in which We for Food is implementing. Uh, and so by doing so, we hope to engage equally with government institutions and departments as well as the private sector so that we can balance that and enable the effective formation of common goals uh, in national policies. Uh, the lessons for future programs that we learned from the two previous one is that we need to have a stronger connection to organizations operating at the regional and global levels to aid in the development 
of those stronger enabling environments. And so We for Food also seeks to work with family foundations, impact investors, lenders, and large corporations that want to invest in our innovations uh, in these emerging markets or would like to incorporate these innovations into their larger value chains. And so we believe this crucial element of engaging impact investors uh, will allow us to sustainably and successfully scale these small and growing enterprises to reach the poorest people around the world. Uh, these lessons learned are important for developing our new relationships and helping innovators sustainably scale their operations and positively contrib contribute to their country's journeys of self to self-reliance. Yeah, and so another question is, what are the core principles uh, of the We for Food partnership design? And uh, we have listed here uh, five of them. So the core, core criteria, the core principles are complementary interests and objectives. Uh, we have realized that an alignment of perspective, uh, priorities and concerns across the partnerships is essential and crucial for good cooperation. Um, on the second step, it's a contribution uh, for increased impact. So partners should also mobilize uh, resources um, uh, in a respective manner and uh, bring in knowledge, expertise, skills, and also financial or material resources. Um, an extensive co-creation and uh, shared responsibility is also key. Uh, we for food partnerships are co-created, are co-developed and co-implemented and entail extensive partnership and collaboration amongst uh, the partners uh, that are in the, in the partnership. I think for us very crucial is a market-based approach and solutions um, because as we know that the market uh, can lift up uh, innovations um, uh, as, a, as a strong uh, for, uh, source. So in order to promote ongoing, sustainable and steady expanding results, partnership must foster on an advanced market-based and market-driven approach for development. Uh, and that is also why we why we are focusing on, on products and, and shared values in, 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 in approaches. And the last one uh, is strong communication. As, as, you, as you know, good communication is a key and a success for any kind of partnership and uh, a strong periodic exchange uh, makes it possible to keep all the partners on the same level of information and also avoid duplication uh, and bring uh, yeah and uh, instead of duplication bring uh, action to to counterproductive and joint activities uh, in the partnership so next slide please Uh, genau. So, what what uh, would a partner gain that uh, would uh, come to uh, come to the table and come uh, joining the partnership? So, first of all, uh, you would be part of a uh, of a very uh, yeah of a very leading a new mechanism in developing cooperation for discovering breakthrough solutions in the world's most pressing problems. Um, that, that the second point, uh, building a strong relation with a strong existing partnership consisting of USID, Sweden through Swedish uh, International Cooperation, CEDA, the government of Germany through BMZ, the European Union in future and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands. And also you would gain, uh, develop a clear understanding what, uh, of customers in emerging and developing markets. So next slide, please. So how do we work? We work directly with entrepreneurs and, uh, and uh, entrepreneurs in the partner countries and potentially that are potentially solving core uh, business challenges uh, of their, um, their challenges in, in the country. For the partners, uh, for partners, we are looking to invest in developing countries and amongst and emerging economies, working with our regional hubs that can provide insights and knowledge that might be otherwise difficult to gain. Uh, that uh, especially the hubs are especially the hubs are stuffed with technical experts who understand the local context and have the local knowledge and the local networks, and so they can really get into uh, the innovations. Uh, who will then join the the We for Food program? The regional innovation hubs ensure mechanism are put in place to mitigate risk for potential investors through a strong due diligence. Uh, of the enterprises and technical assistance and also an uh, advocacy to enable the political and technical uh, environment. Uh, prestige of being associated with a um, 60 million dollar uh, multilateral global pro uh, program uh, which is a regional with a, with a regional focus and uh, profit from a field-based uh, qualified team and uh, possible investment and opportunities 
uh, on a deal flow, that would be also another big advantage of being partner of the of the network. So next slide, please. Uh, so if you are interested and you want to learn more about uh, the We for Food program and also about our uh, regional hub, so don't miss the the uh, hub kickoff calls uh, later in, in the month, or contact you as uh, contact us anytime via the homepage or other uh, yeah via the homepage or other uh, channels that are possible to contact us. Um, I think um, for the process of onboarding, uh, there will be an evaluation and a discussion to make sure that uh, values are aligned and that we are uh, talking from uh, from the same concept and the same approach. And uh, agreement created uh, of different types included a letter of interest, an MOU, or even then afterwards a formal uh, contract uh, when uh, yeah when uh, when the partnership is is to be formalized. Okay. That, I think. Thank you, Thomas, uh, and a big thank you to the rest of our steering committee partner representatives for sharing their vision of We for Food's path forward and how interested organizations can join our efforts to transform the nexus. So thank you so much. Uh, that concludes the presentation portion of the closing, and now we would like to open the floor for audience questions. A few questions have been submitted, but please feel free for the remaining of time to submit your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, the first question uh, is, uh, hold on one second. Uh, have you considered partnering with development banks in this program? For example, the African Development Bank, the Asia Development Bank, et cetera. I guess I'll, I guess I can start. Uh, yes, so we have had conversations with uh, the World Bank and other uh, re uh, regional banks uh, about potential collaboration. Also, we've had some early talks with some other organizations. Uh, but, and, you know, as we noted, we are extremely interested in uh, new donor partners for the steering committee, investment partners, uh, all different types of partnerships to help move this forward in each of the regions in which we're operating, or if you're a donor partner that, for example, would want to work in Latin America and the Caribbean and want to help build us build a hub there, we'd be happy to have you join. Um, Carmen or Omer? Perhaps I can jump in just to echo that. I mean, and as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, I mean, I think we are particularly interested in partners from the developing countries, you know, just to help us really to to have much more tailored, anchored in, in the different countries and, and to provide more sort of insights uh, to, to help us foster more sustainable development impact. So I think that's something, you know, sort of going back to the to the question posed by, by the audience, are we looking at those regional banks? Yes, definitely. Definitely, I'm very interested in, in, in trying to develop further partnerships at, at uh, developing countries or emerging economies. Thanks. I, uh, I can uh, add to this. Yeah, I can add to this for the for the MENA region that we have uh, contact have had contact with uh, the European Investment Bank and the Islamic Development Bank, both operating in uh, the MENA region, and had had uh, first discussions on the program when it was uh, being developed uh, a while ago, and see how we in future can cooperate on these issues. And we will as well reach out to the uh, IFC program that is uh, run by the World Bank in that uh, in that MENA region. So these contexts are being developed now that the programs are becoming more and more uh, concretely defined. And also from my side, I may also want to add that we also are um, engaging very much with the local financial sector in the partner countries and in the hubs, because in the end, any kind of innovation that needs in the long term run uh, finance and localized finance. So also the, the local banks and the local financial institution are also of, of an interest, maybe not as, as a donor, but maybe very strongly as a, as a corporation partner in a long term run. And that actually goes right into a question, Thomas, that says, given we for food is looking for investors with a long term commitment to innovators growth, local commercial banks would appear to not be a great fit as a source of financing. So how does we for F think about working with local commercial banks? question goes to me or 
Well, it's to all of us. If you want to, I, I, I can answer first and, and everybody can chime in or you can start us off. Yeah, from our side, it's uh, usually the, the the local financial sector is not. I call it, I call it sector. It's not only the banks. I mean, there are local banks. That's the commercial banks. There are development banks, uh, local national development banks. Um, but there also there are financial institution uh, like uh, saving groups or other. So there's a lot of a diverse range of uh, of uh, of, um, of financial institution. But in the end, you need to attract them uh, with a business case. And um, and I think that is where we get in contact, and we hope that also our partner uh, enterprises and uh, and innovators they have already a strong collaboration uh, with the local financial sector. So I think uh, once you start uh, improving and growing business of local enterprises, you end up in the question of how to get how to access finance, and I think that uh, can be different, uh, yeah, different starting points. Uh, local banks, financial institution, impact investors, but also any kind of uh, other private uh, mobilizing uh, finances. So I think there are a lot of a lot of sources to to, um, to 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 find to support our our local enterprises. Yes, and on that point, I, I'd agree. So uh, we for food as a program, we always want to know what's happening before we go and do something. And so in each of the regions in which we are planning to operate, we did investment landscapes to look at from the enterprise perspective, from the lender perspective, from the equity investor perspective, uh, as well as from the business and service providers perspective. What do all of them think is happening right now? What do they think are the strengths and weaknesses? And what do they think needs to be done? And so we published those investor landscapes on our website. And one of the key points that came out uh, was that uh, from the enterprise perspective, they, they think that local commercial banks aren't a good fit because the interest rates are too high. And so one of the things that our hubs are gonna try to work uh, through our uh, uh, broker units is to come up with uh, terms for banks that work that also work for the innovators. One of the other things we're really keenly focused on is end user financing, which is a key challenge we saw in the two previous programs and something we really think needs to be addressed uh, in the new program. And so either working with local banks or any of the other types of institutions that Thomas uh, noted, that trying to come up with sustainable, uh, financial terms that not just work for the financial institution, but also work for the smallholder farmer or other end user so that we can get these innovations uh, paid for and uh, uptaken and scaled at a, at a, a more rapid rate. Uh, Carmen O'Mare, do you want to add? Yeah, I wanted to add, I mean, I think something to, to clearly remember with the a fund like the Water Energy for Food that we don't want to distort the market. So where the commercial banks can come in and uh, support those innovators that there's uh, probably not a place for us. Where we come in is to de-risk the market and those investments so then they can be also sort of as part of the tailored approach that we're doing or we're working with uh, those innovators to make them investor investment ready where they there we can pass sort of the sort of the into the scale to to those local commercial banks and i think something to pick up something that you mentioned ku and it links to one of the questions that has come up from from the audience there was somebody that was mentioning a, a can i partner if i'm developing a loans if i remember correctly the the question and i think that goes back to to your point about uh, end user finance. So I think definitely things like that at the regional level with the regional innovation hubs, that was something that they will be looking at, at uh, looking at the end user finance. So that's something that definitely that person can uh, sort of that pose that question can probably approach the, uh, our colleagues at the regional innovation hubs to look at potential partnerships. Thanks. Thank you, Carmen. And and Oh, go ahead, Omer. To complete the picture, I think, uh, yeah, when looking at the regional innovation hubs, one of the most important functions that was presented here is also the brokering unit. And the brokering unit will not only look at uh, development finance, but specifically also at commercial finance and local commercial banks. So that's an integral part of the, in the regional innovation hubs uh, work, looking at it based on the landscape uh, investment study, as uh, Koo said. And for instance, from our perspective uh, as Netherlands, we 
could reach out to, for instance, FMO that we have in mind to do, working with local banks and see whether there's a, a possibility to, through FMO and local banks, see how we can support uh, financial uh, uh, capacity uh, being developed to support uh, innovators uh, being, being facilitated by the regional innovation hubs. Thank you, Omer, and thank you for um, also answering uh, additional questions that came through. Um, the next question is, what uh, coordination do you envisage with similar programs running such as Power Africa Off-Grid program, who has a strong productive use component and the IFC? And so we envision a very strong coordination with those programs. In some cases, in the creation of We for Food, uh, we reached out to them uh, to talk about what were the challenges, what were the strengths and weaknesses. Our goal is to be uh, both collaborative and not duplicative, such that if there's something they're already doing, we don't want to come in and do more uh, unless it's necessary. So we're working with, uh, you know, our colleagues at IFC and understanding what their portfolio looks like. And as far as both on the CETA and the USAID side and the GIZ side with the Power Africa Off-Grid program, uh, to understand where we can come in and be uh, helpful uh, in, in the work that they're already doing. Uh, others, Carmen? Yeah, I think um, sort of uh, our idea is that to to add, not to subtract or duplicate. So I think that's also why part of the work of the enabling environment to see what's out there, what is uh, what all of us are doing, what other donors are doing, and then to to complement and complement uh, sort of that work. Um, so then we can have a sort of a higher impact. So that's part of our sort of idea and work going forward. Thanks, Carmen. And you actually answered uh, the next question, was, which, is, which was how is a program working with respective uh, other donor bilater bilateral programs? Um, is there any addition, uh, any additions that you'd like to add, Ku, Omer, Thomas? Yeah, maybe for Matt, I mean, um, I think we are working in the Nexus context. So there's usually in the development corporation, in yeah, pe people, institutions think in silos, water, energy, agriculture. And I think that's also part of our program to bring these silos together. And so what the, the energy colleagues call uh, productive use, we from agriculture would call powering agriculture. And uh, and so there are also it's it's alignment of wording also and bring the different communities together and 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 using the the different strengths of all the, the different uh, approaches that we are coming but in the end like uh, I think Ku, Ku said I think we are trying to align and to communicate and and and, and get in coordination and see also in a, disco in a conceptual discussion so who has uh, which approach and where something missing I think what what is innovative of of all the approaches is the end user finance and really helping innovating because uh, an innovator can be strong but if the if his his or her client doesn't have access to uh, to finance uh, the innovator will not go far. So I think um, this very holistic approach, I think it makes a, makes the a unique uh, the unique approach of the We for Food uh, concept. So water, energy, agriculture perspective plus uh, finance, and even I would so go far in aspect also finance system development because uh, sometimes also you, like Carmen mentioned, you need to de-risk, uh, but uh, to de-risk things sometimes you get into you need to get involved into financial system development. So how how is banks banks are rates and what are their their secu uh, financial securing measures? So I think this holistic approach makes it a, a, a very attractive approach. Thank you, so Thomas. Cassie, can you yeah. pull up the, the COVID question? So those questions came through from Katie. Um, let me get to the next question and then we'll uh, get to the COVID question. Okay. Right after, if you don't mind. Great, so uh, then we have time actually for two more questions. So this question and the, the COVID. Um, as a nonprofit organization, we have developed a range of technical innovations ready to be transferred to local entrepreneurs. Are there any We for Food mechanisms to fund activities like training, business model development needed to launch our innovations on the market? 
clear yes just approach your next regional innovation hub and try to get uh, on the ground to the people and discuss the concept the ideas the the ideas and or the approach and then uh, we, they will look for uh, if it's possible to find a funding or a solution there and some hubs there are also calls there will be calls where you can apply also for the calls but sometimes at least in recent in east and west africa sometimes also good to uh, yeah to to get in contact with our hub managers and start a general discussion and sometimes from there we we, we can take it yeah and that goes to one of the questions that came up earlier so we envision that the calls for innovation will be released um, at some point in the next few months. Uh, it'll depend on each hub and each hub will have a different context for the call for innovations. And some of the calls may include looking uh, for things just like you know people who can do capacity building or that may be in a follow on call next year or something along those lines. Thank you, Ku. Uh, any uh, any other additions from from the rest of the partners before we move on to the last question? Great. Uh, so the last question that we'll take is, how is uh, the program foreseeing timely and quality de delivery of this huge program in five continents under this COVID pandemic challenges? <coughs> Sure. And so we've thought about this uh, for a while. Uh, you know, one, uh, we recognize that the COVID related challenges are not just affecting one population. It affects farmers, innovators, investors and all the many other partners that our program uh, hopes to work with. And uh, Water and Energy for Foods COVID-19 response frameworks breaks down this into three categories. One, a reflection of our capabilities and the potential impact of COVID-19 on our innovators. Uh, to the retooling of our resources to provide related technical assistance and interim grants where relevant, and three, redeploying our resources through calls and applications for in interim grants, uh, develop deployment of liquid or capital financing and working with other donor programs to multiply the impact of our efforts. And so what have we done so far? One, we've conducted a study with the past SWIP and Power and Ag innovators to understand their unique situations and needs, both monetary and non-monetary created by COVID. Uh, we also developed a COVID-19 resource page for all innovators. It's available on our website that provides information on funding sources, guidance for operations and action plans. Uh, we also released the we for f uh, Asia Edge Ag Energy Prize. And as part of that prize, the finalists uh, had a, a, a co-creation workshop in which they got trained and worked on ideas uh, of how to survive and exist in this COVID-19 time. Now, that's not to say that's the end of our efforts. We expect that our hubs are going to take this on and do much more. Um, and so uh, Thomas and Omer and Carmen, uh, please feel free to add to that. And I think I, I just wanted to add something that has just come up in, in one of the questions. Uh, but what happens with regards to the possible investors interest, given the risk uh, related to, to COVID and the crisis for, for the entrepreneurs? I mean, I think and that's something that we've been working quite a lot or thinking quite a lot with regards to the sort of brokering unit. That is also uh, the role for, for the hubs and I mean, the the brokering unit to to talk and educate the investors um, because maybe they are not ready to take certain risks but it's also part of uh, the sort of enabling environment and discussion and advocacy work that that the fund hopes to to carry out at a regional level to also educate and, and learn together with the investors about some of these risks that both in the nexus but also as they relate to the impact of COVID-19 so that's a very pertinent a thing that as a Ku was talking about both of the different levels that we will be addressing the COVID impact but also sort of how we will be looking forward you know sort of and working with the innovators moving forward at regional level. Thank you so much Carmen. Uh, so that was our last question uh, but I'd like to give uh, the steering committee partners uh, any um, moments for any final remarks uh, before we close out the session. Maybe I can, I can briefly. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yes, please. Omar. Uh, maybe I can briefly just uh, reflect a bit. Um, uh, there was one of the questions of uh, uh, 
for instance, uh, specifically related to the Dutch, but also uh, in general to all of us, I think that we duplicate programs are that we have overlaps. And I think in the development of Water Energy for Food and all our, our four organizations, we specifically took into account these water, energy and food uh, departments also to be engaged, for instance, in my case. And, in the, in the Netherlands, I cooperated with the food security people to develop this and to make it work for all the sectors and not only for one and to link it specifically to the existing programs. And that will be ongoing business in all the water and energy for food hubs, the regional innovation hubs and uh, part of our steering committee discussions, how to ov overcome these overlaps or this risk of overlap. Maybe just say from from CETA's side, um, this has been a, a learning journey for us. And uh, most interestingly is that it's a co-creation, is the working of the donors together to building from the past experiences, maybe from failures also, but also from the successes and seeing what and how can we sort of from our development uh, cooperation and perspective can support those entrepreneurs to have a higher impact and uh, realize sort of a, a more sustainable scale while also looking at um, sort of the impact on the poor and the gender perspective um, sort of moving forward and having that sustainable scale with those perspectives in mind. Thanks. Thank you, Carmen. Thomas? Yeah, just to make it short and sweet, I think it's uh, we are li really looking forward to cooperate and start a We for Food uh, cooperation, uh, and um, I think we are working really on the on the key challenges of uh, of the future: produce more and better food, and uh, do it uh, in a way in a climate friendly way, and also do it. Uh, I mean, everybody. Even in Europe now, we have a lot of water crisis and a lot of uh, challenges with droughts in agriculture and other sectors. So I think to, we are at the core of the of, of, of problems uh, that need to be solved uh, in our partner countries. Um, and I think I'm really looking forward. I think we have a very good concept. I'm really looking forward for the cooperation and want to invite others to join and and uh, and uh, yeah and 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 go with us the same the same uh, or go go with us the. Um, the road and and, and implement, uh, for my opinion, a very good good project. So once more, an invitation to join us um, in the in the in the initiative and uh, in the program. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas, and again, thank you to Omer and Ku and Carmen for for joining us. Uh, and thank you to all who submitted questions. Uh, for the remaining questions that we didn't have an opportunity to answer, uh, we will upload those responses to our website along with the recording of this webinar. Uh, and what an incredible week and what a pleasure it has been to introduce the Water and Energy for Food Grand Challenge program to the public. Uh, I want to also think, uh, take a moment to uh, give a very special thank you again to our speakers and our We for Food Steering Committee partners, along with the GIZ and USA Secretariat units for working really hard to organize the event. And again, a congr congratulations to our regional innovation hubs. As Thomas mentioned earlier, the hubs will be officially kicked off the week of September 28th, and they will be covering more about their work, what countries they operate in, and will be able to answer any questions from the audience. Uh, and just a quick uh, few notes before I wrap up. Uh, there will be recordings of, the, of all the webinars throughout the week made available on our YouTube and website next week. Uh, please uh, follow us on Twitter at we for Food GCD and Facebook at Water Energy for Food to keep us with to keep up with new program news and continue engaging uh, this uh, conversation. Thanks again and good goodbye everyone. <laughs>